be a different norm. Okay, I've heard that A, it's legal, so if it is, where do we get it, how do we take it, how does it compare to a... a oh, DM? this is a really interesting question, um, and maybe, well, this is news. <laughs> what is salvia divinorum, and where do we get it, and what do we do with it? <laughs> well, first of all, it, it's amazing to me as a as a connoisseur of this particular field that here we are, <laughs> 30 years after LSD, and what has happened? An incredible new psychedelic has been discovered. The first psychedelic ever discovered since LSD active in the, in the microgram range. That's big news because a drug, a substance active in the microgram range, that means you can get enough in a handbag to smash China. <laughs> So just as a social consequence, the, the fact that the dose is so unbelievably low, I mean, think about it, psilocybin, it takes 15 milligrams. Mescaline, it takes 500 uh, milligrams. LSD, it takes 200 micrograms. That means theoretically in a gram of LSD, there are 10,000 doses. And in this new compound, it is comparable in strength. And it is, LSD is quasi-artificial. It's made from ergot, but it's a synthetic. The new compound is entirely from a plant. The new compound, uh, well, Here's the deal. For years and years, a phrase you may learn to loathe as Ross Perot gains a sentence. Uh, for years, the psychedelic literature has carried the notation that there was this obscure Mexican mint, which some Indians, under some conditions, claimed was intoxicating. And nobody could ever get off on it. It's sort of like Rupert's theory of morphogenetic fields. Now that we know how to get off on salvia divinorum, it's impossible to understand how we could have overlooked it all <laughs> these years. But it is a, a mega experience of some sort. The plant is like a house plant. It can be grown anywhere. It can be grown in Hawaii like crazy outside. It looks like Joe Plant. There's <laughs> nothing, you know, nothing uh, defining about it. It's just a plant. Uh, and, uh, the way I like to do it is I take a, between 16 and 20 leaves and I lay them down and I remove the mid-vein with my fingernail. This is because this is how the Indians told the anthropologist who busted the story. This is exactly how they do it. Uh, they remove the mid-vein. And then what I do is I make this little soft pancake pile of leaves and it folds down to just about one enormous mouthful. It's the absolute limit of what I can get in my mouth. And then what I do is I lay down in silent darkness where I can see a digital clock. And I lay there, and you have this enormous thing in your mouth. I mean, it's just like, and then slowly it softens. And every time you bring your jaw down on it, you expel this hideous liquid into your mouth that just coats the inside of your mouth and all the mucous membrane and everything. And then, 15 minutes by the clock. You swallow it? No, you <laughs> spit it out. You spit it into a little bowl or a Kleenex or the receptacle of your choice. <laughs> After 15 minutes. Then, somewhere between minute 16 and 19, as you're lying there, you just don't move, you just lie there in the dark, it, you will, it will begin to uh, do what's called streaming. You know what that is? It's these after-image colored purple and chartreuse 
overstuffed things floating by in your visual field. That's called streaming. Uh, then within a minute or two, it will become dramatically peculiar, visually peculiar. Uh, someone said, and this was my impression, actually, well, no, I shouldn't say their name because they may not want to be, go down with me into the dreaded fame, but anyway. A famous person said, it's really stretchy. And I said, yes, it's, yeah. remember that painting by Salvador Dali called Soft Beans Construction, Ode to the Revolution Number 4? Study that puppy sometime. <laughs> uh, that's what's happening. Everything is stretching and falling away and sort of interdimensional. Uh, I'd, I've done it uh, a number of times. And once I got it to work, it's worked every time since. And I think it's a very interesting uh, hallucinogen. The last time I did it, I, it was amazing because uh, in a darkened room with moonlight streaming through uh, um, a big skylight, there was no hallucinogenic activity whatsoever. I mean, that's where you would expect it. You know, you have all the edges, the moonlights, the perfect situation for hallucination. Uh-uh, nothing, crystal clear. But when you close your eyes, instantly, instantly, there are complex three-dimensional hallucinations moving and rotating. So quickly does it form that you have the impression it's like turning on a light in a darkened room. And unlike DMT or psilocybin, where usually when you get these weird hallucinations, you can just sit and look at it and think about it. Say, I am seeing a strange hallucination. It is very weird shit. It is partially strawberry jelly, partially welding partially my uh, what I found in my mother's drawer when I was some you know, that kind of, but this what I noticed on the salvia was that it sort of uh, it crept around behind me and the observing mind began to speak gibberish and then I didn't know where I was in the circuit because the observer was being messed with I think that the key to using this substance and to not getting it scheduled, I mean, dig what the situation is right now. This is legal, legal to talk about, legal to take, legal to give to people. I could smoke it right now. I could choose one of you and bring you up here. We could hold a weekend where we claim this did you some good and we could do it. We could manufacture it. We could turn it. We could put ads in newspapers selling it. It is legal, you know, legal. Remember legal? Okay, that's what it is. It's legal. Well, is it a good trip? Well, that's a good question. Uh, a, a very well-known researcher took it, who has a big academic position and so forth, and he said, he told me, he said, it's it was a complete psychotic break. He said, I had no idea who I was or what I was doing. I gave it to an acquaintance of mine who is a, a more, how shall we put it, earthy person. And he said to me, if you want this stuff to be a success, you should throw all the eggheads off the bandwagon because they're giving it a bad name. It's simply a great load. <laughs> so I don't know whether it's a great load or a complete psychology. It depends on how many degrees you've collected, uh, where it puts you. Uh, well, uh, how, well, let me talk a little bit more about the plant because the plant is on Maui. I mean, somebody sitting no more than eight feet away from you is keeping their mouth very shut at this <laughs> point. Uh, it's here. People know about it. Uh, I think we should do the plant and not attempt to extract or commercialize the substance because here's the thing. The substance is active at the 200 microgram level, just like LSD was. But unlike LSD, 
you smoke this stuff, that means there's no way back. And with the pure compound, do you know what 200 micrograms looks like? It looks like, you know, a pissant's box lunch. It's not much. It's like a, a grain or two of salt. Well, you can tell people are going to do too much. They're going to do too much because it's easy to do 10 times too much, 20 times. And we have no human data on the pure compound. Now, human data on the plant, we have these Indians. But everything at this point about this plant is mysterious. Everything. For example, naturally you, you have this plant, it's in shamanic usage, so you go to the people. Say, you know, uh, what, I what is the name of this plant? They say to the Mazatecs uh, who, who use it. They say, we call it ojos de la pastora, eyes of the shepherdess. Now, there's a number of things about this that are interesting. First of all, eyes of the shepherdess, there are no shepherdesses <laughs> in Western mythology or iconography. In the entire Bible, there are n there's no shepherdess. We get, three, we get some shepherds in the Christmas story, gender unspecified, but I've never seen them portrayed as shepherdesses. There is no shepherdess in Western history, religion, iconography, mytho it's a nothing burger, it's a dead end, it's a dry hole. Why is it called Eyes of the Shepherdess? Next question. These people are mixed tech. You, you call it Eyes of the Shepherdess? It's, if you do, it's practically the only Spanish you speak. What do you call it in mixed tech, for crying out loud? Say, we don't have a name for this plant in our language. Well, now, this is fascinating. That's impossible if they've been using it for some time. No culture on Earth has something which it's been using for a long time, for which it has no name. That's preposterous. And so you say to them, how come you have no words in Mixtec for this plant? And they say, because it's new. And then the taxonomists get into the act and they say, that's impossible. This plant is not known from anywhere else on this planet. It's only been collected in the Sierra Mazateca of southern Mexico among these people who have no name for it in their own language and who claim it's new. Well, I don't want to push the conclusion, but on Maui I probably uh, would be led to it by half of you. It appears that this plant has no history. It came literally out of nowhere. And now, here's something interesting about it. We have in this country a very complex drug law called, I, I can't remember, it's called the Cogener Enantiomer structural near relative law. And what it says is that the district attorney or his appointed stooge can declare a substance illegal without any scientific evidence or any medical evidence provided that that substance is an enantiomer, stereoisomer, cogener, or structural near relative of an already scheduled compound. This isn't. This isn't. This isn't. So in order to make this stuff illegal, for the first time since the 1960s, the government is going to, in the clear light of day, and hopefully in the clear light of reason, is going to have to present scientific and medical evidence as to why this should not be illegal. And I don't think they'll be able to do it. I think there may be a case against the pure compound, although I can imagine a dosage system that would work. You could put it up on paper, just like acid, but not eat the paper, smoke it, but dose it at regular doses. But I think we should all grow this plant and make no big deal about it. Uh, it's, it's in a very interesting place in the spectrum. It's a lot stronger than any 
cannabis in any form other than eaten. And it's uh, truly psychedelic on the psilocybin LSD scale, but it's brief. It only lasts about 45 minutes. It's very manageable. Uh, so f as far as I can tell, only taste is a problem, and some people are working on breeding palatable strains, but I yeah, there is, an, is a palatable strain, as they call it. But I think we could be on the brink of a craze here, folks. Where can one get a start? Well, first of all, ask around, because there's plenty of it growing on Maui. Otherwise, these exotic plant dealers are on to the fact that this is happening. And uh, very easy to grow, very easy to use totally legal, safe psychotherapists who are worried about other substances where they may have a legal problem can use this safely. And I, I think that it's, we have been screaming, we the psychedelic community, for 20 years for a fair hearing. <laughs> establish a shamanic plant with a history of shamanic and sacramental use and uh, and if we can do that and demonstrate that it can be used without society exploding at its foundations uh, the one argument they have against the legalization of hallucinogens will crumble and we can redeem the entire enterprise so this is a very real and practical piece of news, which I hadn't intended to end on, but the question uh, prompted it. Return to the plants is the message. I don't, I don't like gurus. I think they should be hunted with dogs. Uh, I am not one. I, my God, God help you if your life is so desolate and empty that you follow me. I mean, I'm either looking for the John or trying to buy the New York Times or something, but, you know, don't do that. It's bad mental hygiene to follow. There, it, it lacks, uh, it lacks panache. Does have suggested common name? Salvia divinorum? No, although I'm urging that we call the compound, which is salvinorine alpha, we call it sale or just Sally, for sure. Uh, does it introduce you to machine elves? The people who... We've sent some DMT pilots who were pretty, pretty white-knuckled when they came back. Uh, I, I, I think that, you know, if you thought, if you thought by smoking DMT, you could then say, all right, thank God I lived through that. Now I've done strongest drug. Now I don't have to do that again. No reprieve, no escape. Here it is on your plate. I don't know. It's different. It's, it's r different. And that's amazing that, you know, after so many years and that it could come from a plant and a plant with a history of shamanic usage. Uh, you know, there are lists of these suspect hallucinogens and People like myself and my brother, an inspired botanist, collect them. I have a bunch in my garden, suspect hallucinogens. No clue as to what part of the plant you take, how you take it. You know, is it an enema? Is it snorted? Is it smoked? Does it take 10 pounds boiled down or the edge of one leaf? You haven't a clue. But I'm sure this salvia episode convinces me there are great mysteries to be uncovered, great allies in the enterprise of human becoming still to be discovered. And, uh, you know, one plant uh, leads to another. That's what I was taught. <laughs> Thank you very much.